Now we have no light. And we have a red light. All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the August 12th, 2019 regular meeting of the Town of Easton Planning and Zoning Board. Um, we have a pretty full agenda tonight, so just in case, if there's anybody here for two Foundry, 250 Foundry Street, Southeastern Regional High School, or Sawmill Village, 558 Foundry Street, uh, they're both, we've received requests to continue both of those, so just to make sure no one's here for that. Um, and we will start off, number one on our agenda, with a sign review for 520 Foundry Street, La Familia Restaurants. Okay, why don't you... Have a seat, grab a microphone, and identify yourself for the record. And My name is uh, Fernando Penagos, uh, with Sign Source, uh, trying to uh, pull a permit for a one pole uh, double face standing uh, sign, uh, illuminated with LEDs and um, only the uh, graphics will be uh, illuminated, not the background. Um, is that it? Four by eight. Uh, Four by eight, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, okay. Do you have anything? Um, it meets all the dimensional requirements. Um, you know, my one comment or thought was it is a light box. Um, and I know the board has. Um, looked. Um, sure. Not necessarily. Yeah. <laughs> We'd look to. Um, so, since we have a new member, you want me to <coughs> pick it up from there? Yeah. So, yes, please. Um, starting about two years ago mm -hmm. uh, in Easton, through a lot of uh, public requests, the planning board um, received or kind of took over approval of internally illuminated signs. And uh, I think what the community was looking for was to try to improve uh, the aesthetic and the quality of the signs. Um, so we, we did quite a bit of work on it, <clears throat> rewrote the bylaw a couple of times, had a lot of public presentations, brought in a number of sign companies. And um, when I first saw this on Friday, um, I'd been traveling, so it was later in the day, but I, I said, oh, I wish we had a chance to talk earlier. Just my concern was where it was, it was just a simple sign box. It's a light up. Basically, a not your typical light box. Right, yeah. and we've allowed that in the past when it's an existing light box with maybe a new tenant, you know, and you take out. But we had really um, started to have have success and have good movement with, you know, things like channel letters and ha halo letters or, or built up illuminated acrylic, mm -hmm. trying to add a little depth, a little texture. That's to the what design. it is, an illuminated acrylic. Right, but it's just a one in one plane. Right, it's just a smooth. Uh, the uh, acrylic is um, stands out half inch. Okay. Um, so it's just the uh, acrylic yeah. will illuminate, not the background. Right. Um, so. Um, so. Anyways. So. Yeah. I. I mean. I. So I didn't see anything. Um, so you guys feel. Feel free to move well, the, the hog. So, um, so my concern was it, it looked like it was just flush um, right. acrylic. I, I get that the background's not lighting up, just the just the uh, the graphics and the and the letters. And this computer doesn't want to come over. Got it right here. Yeah, I'm looking for the dimensions section. Is there anything that shows? Pass that down to. Is there a section at all that shows where it's built out? So all I the saw last file. Oh, here, I found it. It. The last file. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I just had it, so yeah. yeah, I touched that. It's not at bottom point. and right. It's over. Is it that happens? Do you think that comes out of this? I can see that, yeah. It doesn't show that much. It's very yeah. small. I mean, so could that, if that were to jump, went up maybe an inch, would that provide more of a? Two inches is quite look, a bit. Look it doesn't show like a, More like a block? Um, a little bit, yeah. yeah. So is there any way to, no, to no, increase that depth? Oh, make him mm -hmm. to come out more? Yeah. yeah. One, uh, three quarters of yeah. an inch. Two inches? Mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> you have to build it out. Probably I mean, we yeah. could if we could do a channel letters instead of acrylic, but. Yeah, we, we like channel letters. Don't you we? like channel letters. Yeah. <laughs> Call on me. Call on you. Call on me. 
I guess I can I can recognize the, but you have to identify yourself for the. I'm Keith and Rockwell. Okay. We own a, a building. Uh, I work in Foundry. Microphone. Which is next for you. Please. Yeah, you grab, grab the mic. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Wayne. Sorry, Wayne. He can't. I thought, I thought it, it's not a parabolic mic. I thought it would pick it up. No, sorry. Keith and Laughlin. So um, we're a Mason resident. <coughs> Foundry Street. We're, we're landlords next to you. Uh -huh. okay. okay, next to the Foundry Restaurant. Love, love the old landlords. Known them forever. But we have channel letters on our building. We're uh -huh. repainting it right now. We're doing nice channel letters. They're all descriptive, you know, first high class letters. Oh, yeah. So we're doing that right now, mm -hmm. and if you could do that next to us, it, it, it increases the um, yeah. high class area of, of five course. corners with the, the, the sewage coming down the street uh -huh. into the area. So we're spending the money, I'd ask you to spend Absolutely. the money. Absolutely, uh, I mean, that, could, that's my recommendation. We could do that on the building. The problem is that the building is set back and no one can see it. So that's why the, uh, the standing Oh, we understand sign. why you put, I understand why you're adding a, a, a pylon no. sign, but mm -hmm. I would, you know, yeah, we're you said it. I, I mean, and, channel letters. And looking at it, you know, uh, I mean, I understand the looking at the graphic. It it probably doesn't make sense to to build the the that little design of flirtily with a couple bowls or whatever that is. Forgive my crudeness, but you know, to build that out, but or to build that out two inches. But if, you know, maybe if the if the lettering could come out more, uh -huh. you know, and then. Um, and then, you know, if, if the graphics came out, you know, an inch or so and letters came out two inches, we're just trying to add some We depth. can do it an inch yeah. because it's kind of small. It's only a four by eight. Yeah, see, so we think that's pretty big. So. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do, the, uh, does, do the designs at the top and the bottom also come out? Uh, I'm sorry? Oh, the, do the, yes, yes, the everything. designs come out uh -huh. also? That would actually, if you had... What if the letters were uh, one inch and then the designs depth. were a half inch? So it just give it some different depth. I, I'm just... I don't Could design be. designs. I just... Thought of that. Yeah, we could build it up a little bit. Yeah. Greg, are you referring to just the La Familia, or would you? Are you thinking well, about I'd restaurant as well? Up. I'd want everything okay. built up. But my thought is this: if, let's say the letters came out two inches, or isn't a channel letter usually like inch and a half or two inches? Yeah, you want to come right. up the building and, and pop. Right. But it's here, is better. But yeah. that graphic, if it's, you tried to do that. You're, it's not going to be. It's just too small. It's too right. It's yeah. too much detail. Yeah. So then, but then the lettering, the letters would come out a little more, and then the right the graphics. Yeah, I'd right like. There. I mean, if the graphics are coming out three quarters, I'd love to see the font come out an inch and a half. Uh huh. Inches. Right. That seems to be a good. Yeah. All right. That sounds good. Yeah, I, I could do that. Can you do it? Yeah. So, can we vote on this with that side of detail, and then do la familia on approval till you send in a new drawing? Can we do that stuff? Just to expedite things, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So you said um, an inch and a half on the letter stand out. Was that? Or, or two inches. Two, two inches. Okay. So yeah. Two inches. Two inches. And, and then the small detail, do a half inch on the uh, small Yeah. Detail. I mean, I, it, it is. I get where it, it really can't be that much, but I think. And then, like you say, the, the just the. I think that'll that'll look a lot nicer, especially when it's not illuminated. Add, add some nice depth to it, and oh. and like we're, we're trying to this this new district. Um, or this rebranded district, you know, we're uh -huh. really working on the, a lot of the new zoning is going to be based on aesthetics. Um, so. What are the posts made out of? Steel. Yeah. And they'll be black as well? I mean, is, is uh, this yes. an accurate rendering? Yes. And are they, are, I mean, here they look like they're rectangular. The, uh, yeah. the pole would be a five by five steel. That's a foundry, uh, so it's a they're they're a square. Yes. Is there going to be one post or two here? You show. Uh, one. I we change it to one because the sign's kind of small to have two posts. And one's enough. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Probably look better with so one. one yeah. post. It w yes. Um, I agree. Okay, so a motion to approve the sign with a suggested change of uh, approximately two inch um, letter stand out. Uh, can you say, say that again? Oh, to approve the sign with the change of an approximately two inch. Letter yes. stand out. Yeah, I okay. and three quarter to one inch mm -hmm. um, graphic. Yes. Before before I second to that, <laughs> I actually think the visual with the two posts actually looks better than the single post. Do you want to discuss that further? Sure. I mean, uh, we can do either. If it 
I liked the two better, but I was willing to give them some, uh, it's some a small leeway sign. on no, their design. I would like to second it with the approval based on the two inch channel letters and the two posts. Yeah. Is it best you say? <laughs> Um, so, all right, so we have a second. Um, any further discussion? Would, would it be so. possible, possible to also do a set of channel letters on the building? Do channel letters on the building? Sure. Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so to include channel oh, letters mean, on the no, building. But they're not illuminated back. now. I got you. Uh, you'll, he'll need to come back if he's. You, it's uh, possible, but not under this application. Right. Yeah. All right. This is just right. for the freestanding side. I think stick with. I don't think there's. There's no reason why we couldn't in the bylaw, but you just you'd right. have to that, correct. You'd have to file again because this is just for the right. bylaw. Because right. we haven't seen what yeah. that would look like. So this would be illuminated, correct? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Um, so did you get? Did you kind of yes. understand? Yes. No, I was so asking Susanna. She was, she had a puzzled look. Two posts. And the yes. brackets come out. One is a three quarters of an inch. Yep. Yeah. Smooth flowing local government, huh, folks? We actually know what we're doing. It's just a little, you know, sometimes getting there, making the soup is a little messy. But so, all right, we have a second. Any further discussion? All right, all those in favor of the motion? Motion passes unanimously. Great. All right. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Thank Appreciate you. it. So just get your drawing revised uh -huh. to reflect that and, and get it into Stephanie. And then we can, as soon as she has that, uh, we can release the approval. Or she can release the approval. Good luck. Thank you. Thanks. All right, uh, next up is minor modification of existing site plan 20 Roach Brothers Way. Welcome, gentlemen. That tripod's probably set up right where it needs to be, right? Mm -hmm. camera? Yep. Just identify yourself for the record and have at it. Hi, uh, good evening. Um, my name is Jim Sperber. I am director of real estate for Roach Brothers Supermarkets. Welcome. Chuck Bromley, uh, representing uh, Roach Brothers with uh, Plan B Retail Design. I'm principal of Plan B Retail Design. Great. Thanks. Um, I will introduce this. Uh, so we're here for a minor modification of existing site plan, uh, basically for the purpose of uh, expanding our kitchen, um, existing kitchen space into the uh, old liquor store space. Uh, we Last month, we moved uh, our liquor tenant into the store itself. Um, so we could, uh, we thought it would, he would do better. Indicating. Okay. Better there and, um, and we wanted to expand the kitchen to increase production um, and to improve uh, s sanitary and uh, basically to improve the sanitary and safety um, of the kitchen too. Uh, right now the kitchen services the Easton store. Um, with an expanded kitchen we would um, also be uh, producing some food for our downtown crossing store which um, the kitchen space is small there and can't keep up with the, the uh, demand there. That's a fun commute for the driver. It, it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. This space here actually indicates the vacated space from the beer and wine. It's moved over to the center of the store. And then this gray area you're looking at here is the expanded area. What it's made up of is pretty much coolers for product uh, coming in and product going out. and a preparation area where we've isolated the food preparation through the cook banks, which are all existing, and then coming back out through a packaging and then through the coolers and out into the space or into the store. Okay. Uh, what it does facilitate, as, as Jim said, was uh, certainly uh, improving all of the health conditions. We do all of the work now under a refrigerated space. We have uh, a bank of glass showers, which takes the warm product, hot product out of the ovens cools it down much faster, which reduces the exposure to bacteria. And then putting out through packaging, and as I said, going to the store or going into storage cooling. 
Um, the, the only thing, I guess, the other thing I would say, there's there's no uh, changes to the exterior of the building on this. Um, there will be, uh, there won't be any increase in receiving traffic because it's the same trucks that come into service. Might have some more product on it, but it would be the same. There will be a slight increase of outgoing traffic when um, I think it's, uh, excuse me, about three uh, trucks a week. Um, in the beginning for a DTX that would uh, take the product from Easton to Boston. And those would be box trucks and vans. Sure. Sure. Box trucks and vans. Just, just curious, was like, approximately how many, how many truck trips do you have now? We had existing per week, you had 48 tractor trailers, okay. uh, 88 box trucks, um, typical to produce, dairy, that sort of thing, and then vans, step vans was 21. Okay. Um, so it's significant, but yeah. increase of about one point something percent. So that's about. Okay. Well, those are the income and outgoing. Oh, um, it's much less. So, like you said, there's only three additional trucks going out. Okay. So no change to, to the footprint of the building. Basically, no change to traffic. <coughs> um, Stephanie, do you have any? The primary reason, and they are, ex I mean, they are changing the footprint because they're expanding into the space that was occupied by the... Right, I, did, I guess I mean the, the, yes. the external Adam plaza as it relates right. to the parking lot. Correct, there's, there's, right. there's no change <clears throat> there. Um, the primary purpose, again, they're expanding the kitchen. They're also, um, they're doing more production that's going off-site. The bylaw allows manufacturing assembly or packaging of consumer goods um, as long as 50% of that product is being sold on site. We've had several conversations and um, again, they've indicated that they're just going to be supplying, at least to begin with, they're going to be supplying the Boston store because of the limited kitchen space there. Um, if that were to expand beyond 50%, I, I think that that's a change in use and that would need to be evaluated. It wouldn't just be an accessory use to the current grocery store operation. Um, I did have the, because they did provide, um, one of the things I had asked for was the vehicle traffic, and they did provide that. Um, it's, it's, I don't think it changes things much, but it did indicate there would be two additional box trucks going out per week. Again, I don't think three makes a big difference, um, but just to note that. Okay, great. So, so I guess, so for the record, uh, the items you're distributing um, for sale are not going to total more than 50% of what you're producing. No, not. Sounds like you've had these conversations. So, and, and if at some point you expand and it goes beyond the 50%, what would that be, a variance? I think they'd need to, yes, apply for You'd a variance. We'd have to readdress, but you're under 50%, so it's within the allowed use. I understand that. Okay. Um, board members, any questions, comments? No. I have a no. question regarding <clears throat> how the elevation might be affected. Exterior? Exterior. Zero, nothing, no, no changes outside. In reality, this space, which was the beer and wine, was built originally as part of the supermarket, it never opened as such. It was, it was isolated off, but the Heights of the building and everything goes out to that degree. So the front elevation, side elevations all remain as it is. Doesn't step down, at this point it steps down lower to go into the satellite space. But you do have exterior storefront doors and glazing. So will those remain and what will those look into? The only difference going on the front is uh, the glazing will remain. That will become bottle redemption. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, when we, we had bottle redemption inside, that moved outside temporarily so it could do the facilitation of the floral move to allow for the beer and wine. And what's happening is that'll become an automatic door, um, almost like a, I'll call it a CVS yeah. door. It's a bifold door so it can go in and out the same door. If you've got your arms full of bottles, you're bringing a cart in with bottles for redemption. But the storefront and all of that stays on change except for that conversion of the automatic door. Thank you. 
all set. Any, anybody in the audience has any questions? All right. Uh, so we're just looking to endorse some minor mm -hmm. modification. Mm -hmm. Anybody wants to make that motion? A motion to approve the application as presented. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Motion passes. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks Thank very you. much. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, so next up was the, the 250 Foundry Street, Southeastern Regional. And as I mentioned, we received a request to continue to our next meeting, yes. which is 20th. Oh. 26th. 26. Right, it's not the, yeah, not not the, the other one. one. Okay. Not the if anybody would like to make that motion, it would be most appreciated. I'll make a motion to continue the site plan review of 250 Foundry Street till August 26th. Second. All those in favor? Motion passes. All right, next up. Continue site plan review 184 Lincoln Street. Centrica Business Solutions. Oh, I know. Do you have my staff report? Well, nobody looked at it. How is this the solar panel? What? Solar panel? I'm sorry? What's the solar panel? Yeah, this is the solar port over the parking yeah. lot at yeah. the, yeah, oh, the nursing okay. home. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now you're saying something totally, I didn't say Zorba's. Ah. <laughs> you're like, what's that? <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. They provided everything they needed. Um, we did. He had, he had to just. Had Welcome back. It would <coughs> yes, thank you. Just uh, identify yourself for the record, please. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Rich Tabazinski, and I'm with Atlantic Design Engineers, and uh, just rep representing Centrica Business Solutions uh, for the Athena Solar Project over at uh, 184 Lincoln Street. And basically, we were here. Um, about a month ago or so, um, and we had a couple comments that we had to address on the site plans, um, which we believe we've addressed adequately and, uh, and uploaded them onto your uh, permitting website. Um, ba basically, what we added on the site plan that you requested was some information on the drainage system for, I guess, two things, the existing drainage system that was out there um, that drains the existing parking lot in the back. Uh, so we have we sent our survey crews out there and did locate existing catch basins, uh, manholes, um, and showed all that information on the plans. And then we also provided some detail on the uh, proposed uh, downspouts that uh, would be taking care of the runoff uh, or the rainfall that lands on the solar panels themselves. Instead of having it drip off the edges, we had proposed a guttering, gutter system and downspout system. We showed locations of where those will be um, on the plans, labeled that up. Uh, we also labeled the uh, butters on the drawing to the north that were missing on the original submittal, and also the aquifer protection district boundary line was, was added to the drawings also. Um, and that really were the, were the extent of the changes that I believe you were looking for. And I believe we've shown them adequately and we'll just open it up to any other questions from anybody. Okay, great, thanks. Stephanie? They met all the requirements and so addressed the, all the deficiencies. So the stormwater management yep. now? All right. Um, anybody on the board have any questions or comments? Seems to have addressed no. everything. In the audience, anybody? Who wants to bring us home on this one? <laughs> Motion to approve the site plan for 184 Lincoln Street. I'll second. second. You can second it. Susanna, I'll <laughs> let you decide between that photo finish. <laughs> it's either all right. Um, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Motion passes. 4 0. Thank okay. you, sir. Very good. Appreciate Thank it. you. Thanks for working with us. No problem. <clears throat> Appreciate it. All right. We are just zooming along here. Continued public hearing 16 Pheasant Lane, special permit common driveway.
Don't mind me. Just waiting reading. on you. Just reading. Um, feel free. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Scott Farrier from Holmgren Engineering, uh, representing Keith McLaughlin. Uh, back here tonight uh, on the property on Pheasant Lane for a special permit for a common driveway. Uh, our last hearing a few weeks ago, we had uh, a couple of questions uh, that were left to address on the plans, uh, primarily the grading right at the entrance of the driveway, and then uh, also was brought to our attention that we needed to show it all the way up throughout the driveway, so we've made those changes, uh, showing the grades again at, at the very beginning, and then all the way through. Uh, the total driveway slope is about 1.5% from, uh, from the beginning to the end. Uh, it's designed and intended to be at existing grade. Okay. Well, the, the, unfortunately, that microphone only, doesn't amplify the sound in here. It's only for ECAT. I, I can ask him to speak a little louder. You know, the front row is open. You, like you can certainly time. move up if you'd like. <clears throat> I'll speak louder. Thank you. All right. I appreciate it. Uh, so the driveway is, from beginning to end, is proposed at 1.5%, uh, which is at existing grade uh, as outlined in your bylaws. Uh, the one other thing that we've added since the last plan, it was suggested that we show some uh, screening at 20 Pheasant Lane uh, in the back of the property uh, for that owner who's going to lo lose uh, the trees that are in, on our property once we build the house on that lot. So we have added uh, six pine trees in the back uh, across our property that will at least give, uh, as I said, the owner of number 20 a little bit of a, a landscape buffer on our property uh, to screen him from the proposed house in that location. So those are the changes we make. Everything uh, we made, everything else is the same as it has been. Uh, as I said, we feel like it's designed according to your regulations and won't have any uh, any additional adverse impacts on the on the neighborhood or the drainage patterns that currently exist. Okay, so can you, and I know you told me you threw the topo on here. Yep. Um, you proposed topo, right? Or existing as well? I'm just trying uh, to. I'm we trying have to the existing out. topography, and then I've added uh, proposed spot grades. Uh, okay. In different locations, grades. right. All right. All right. 99, 100, I got you. Okay. So, looking at the, oh, do you, Stephanie, do you have anything? I, um, I, I, I may be going the same way. I looked at it. They did address the, the concerns, the items that um, were noted in my report. The, I, it looks like positive drainage to Pheasant Lane will occur on the lower portion. Um, they just provided today the spot grades for the upper portion, which is the um, portion of the driveway that actually traverses onto the new properties. Um, I, I don't, it looks like the grades go from 104 to 102, and then you have a spot grade between 102 and 101. I mean, I'm sorry, 100, and then 100, uh, and 100 is the existing grade across, and it, it is, it's a foot difference. It's so the spot grades show 101 in that area where the grading was 100. Um, it would seem to me that that's going maybe cause a little bit of puddling. Um, I'm not sure exactly where you're speaking. Are you talking right above the proposed uh, leaching area? Right in this location? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's throughout there. You, so you see you have your 102 contour? Yes. And then you, between the 102 and the, 10, and the 100, yep. You have a spot grade of 101 yep. and by 7. And then you have between the, that 100 contour and the next 100 contour, your spot grades of 101. 101 in that oh, location. Gotcha. Right. Uh, well, there will be filling around the septic system as well uh, to, to raise up that, that portion of it. So the driveway and the side slopes in that area will be uh, will be raised. Uh, how that will affect lot A, it'll still, everything will still shed across uh, the bottom, or the, the bottom of lot B, the top of lot A, 
and eventually shoot towards this uh, turnaround in this location and head out to the wetland area like it does currently. So it's, it's all going to get there just, I guess, in a little bit of a, a roundabout way just because of the fill that will be necessary for the septic system. So again, just to reiterate, it looks like the current flow pattern is from an easterly to a westerly direction. Right. With those spot grades, it looks like you'll get some southerly flow. It'll hit the 101 right. contours yep. and then flow to the south? Yep, down that way. No, I, I agree. And then, but at that point, it'll, it'll shoot across the driveway in that that lower spot there and run back out to the wetland like it does uh, like it does currently. That was my okay. okay. So you know every time we do I, I kind of explain to some some of the abutters that spoke at the last meeting um, how regulations have changed and, and a lot of houses that were built back in the 60s, 70s, 50s, even the 80s are, are at or even sometimes below the water table and that's why there's a lot of water issues and you know we, we very often hear you know that that new house or that new structure is going to give us even more water but we very often say well no you know the new new structures are are required to abide by much stricter regulations um, some of which come into play here. <clears throat> and I remember, forgive me, I'm not sure who it was, but I remember one of the, the abutters um, spoke up about how, oh, <laughs> I hate this computer, <laughs> about how, I'm going to borrow this for a second, um, how on lot A, so the water flows across lot A, as we can see, sort of. Essentially, uh, yes. East, east to east. west. And there's a new septic system going in. So there's a couple things. There's, it shows the existing tree line, which is obviously going to get broken up, if not removed, mm -hmm. when you clear for the septic. Um, has, that, has that leaching area been designed yet? Or not yet, no. So, because here's my concern. What, if the water's flowing that way, and then if that's going to end up being a mounded system or you know, up high, sure. which I'm assuming it, it probably is a little yes. bit. Yes. It, it kind of ties in a, a little bit. It's not what she was talking about, but it's kind of all related. Mm -hmm. My, my concern is, and we just had a case like this recently, um, and, and I understand that's what folks' concerns always are. They don't want, if they already have water, they don't want more water. No more I water. I would sure. say, well, we've got to make sure it flows this way. So yep. if, it's, if it's sheeting sort of right to left, um, well, that septic system, which isn't designed, and right now it's just, right. yep. you know, there's no, just I a understand. box there. Yep. Um, what can we do? at this point prior to a septic design I mean, do we put i'm t thinking back to mr adams piece mm -hmm. so yeah we put something under the driveway to to make sure it flows or well, you know what what can we because I, I have trouble to me it seems sort of that that's kind of an important element sure. this is really a flat yep. site no i understand the, i want to be able to represent to the the pipe the under residents. the driveway works if you're raising the driveway right. and it's required if you're raising the driveway because the driveway would act as a dam in this situation where we're putting the actual driveway itself at existing grade, uh, the hump that's going to be required really on all three septic systems, but on that one behind 16 Pheasant Lane in particular that you're speaking about, the hump, what that's going to force the water to do that's uh, over in the easterly direction behind house number 20 is just, it's going to loop around the proposed septic system and again hit the proposed driveway and then from that location, get back onto its current path, heading towards the, the wetland area, uh, you know, behind house number 12, and further down as you go towards Bay Road. But uh, the driveway itself is going to be at a very near existing grade, so the, the water, the overland flow is just going to go around that proposed septic system to, in, in a northerly direction, get around... Uh, get around the septic system currently where the stone wall is and hit our driveway and run out to the wetland like it does now. Is the stone wall remaining? Uh, probably not because of the grading in that location, not. 
Oh, because of the leaching area. Right, yeah. exactly, exactly. Because of the grading, it'll it'll probably run into. I mean, otherwise, it, so. that would act as sort of as a, a sort of stop the water from flowing that way in the first place. But it would make it a little. Yeah, bit I mean, harder, sometimes so. there are you know gravel yep. drains and yep. um, things like yep. that that, yep. that would work. But yeah, but in that location on lot A, there won't be Not, the stone wall yeah. have to go. Yeah. Right. I think the rest of it will stay, but in that location in particular, it won't be there. So is your intention to run the water east to west or to have it eventually run s southernly? No, it'll, as, as it does now, it'll run east to west, and right now it all kind of runs east to west through this wetland area uh, behind house number 12 and running further down Pheasant Lane. So it's, it's going to get around that septic system, hit the driveway, and do what it does now. Which is, you know, really kind of run, I guess, more in a southwesterly direction than a direct east to west. But basically run towards Pheasant Lane and the stream that's down closer to Bay Road. And over in this, I mean, obviously in this location here, we're not doing anything at all. So it's going to hit that location and run like it always does. So, you, yeah. Hmm? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I did, I did. So, uh, just so the two proposed residences, you have two proposed type of foundations. Yes. Are those based on test pits or are those just guesstimates? Based on test pits. Okay. So those are locked in. Right. Right. Okay. Um. So I, I guess, you know, my only, you know, these are when you think of these plans, these are sort of a. This is a reference document, you know, we go back on. And, and I know Mr. McLaughlin at the last meeting said, hey, maybe these houses end up going to, to family members. Maybe they don't, right? Who knows, right? So let's, they get built. Driveway goes in, just like you said. Septic goes in. Water goes over the driveway. Rain's really heavy in November, like this past year. Then it gets really cold overnight, and everything ices over. Mm -hmm. So that homeowner, who doesn't know anything about this process, says, oh, I don't like that. Well, that's going to destroy my driveway. That's dangerous. The people just don't like ice on the driveway. True. Um, and um, they they build a berm, or they you know they do, which granted I know is out of out of your control. Right. But I guess my my concern is that the document as it exists right now doesn't. I, I think Stephanie's saying the same thing. It, it, it just doesn't, doesn't have doesn't. quite enough info. It's great. I understand you haven't done a test pit yet for the septic, but I, 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 I need something on here, I think, that we can refer back to that locks this in saying that, okay, if we're going to approve this, you know, there, there's a line, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but there's a line in the bylaw that the driveway can't change. It can't modify the, dri you know, the existing drainage. Right. Drain. Which is why we're uh, designing right. that existing but, but grade. Putting a, putting a hump there is going to just, is going to change it anyway, so the, the septic. So I'm just... I'm, I'm just concerned, um, you know, I, I, I wish there was, I wish there was a topo around the, the, the leaching area because then we could, we could say, yes, okay, this is great and engineered. There's just, we're taking a big leap of faith here because we have some, we have some spot grades on the driveway, but things are going to be changing. Around it. Around the driveway. Not in the driveway, so, but around it. We and if I'm wrong, guys, you know, but that, that's kind of my concern. So, you have know, you done the test pits? Have you done test pits? <coughs> not, we've done test areas? pits out uh, on lots B and C, unwitnessed, but not, not uh, on so, 16 Pheasant Lane. We just so, but you've done at, at the leaching areas on right. that road. Right. And they're not going to be raised up at all? The road will... No, they're going to be raised oh, right, up okay, on yeah, B and C, yeah. sure. It's going to yeah. be raised. Yeah, yes. so the road's going to be, that corner will jut into the driveway, or how is that... Yes, the corner, right, the corner of the septic system in that location. It'll be under the driveway. Mm -hmm. But it'll probably be above the grade of the street, potentially. Not above the grade of the driveway. The so how are you going to keep 100 if you have to raise the house and the, well, you're going to use pumps so you don't have to raise the homes as much, right? No, it'll be, no. again, in this location, the top of foundation is 102. Mm -hmm. The grade over the system will be 101. Okay, yeah. So, uh, Everything will work based on the test pits that we've that we've dug so up what there the, what so did the, far. What did the test pits indicate? Off the top of my head, I don't know, but uh, 
groundwater. So 96 or at least right, yeah. Right, for groundwater elevation, right. Mm -hmm. Down a little bit below that, 95, I'm, I'm not sure. Okay, and the new test pits, this plan, but so the plan is predicated on the fact that when you do a test pit in that leaching, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna, gonna be within match a- match that elevation, right, a foot exactly. Of that. Exactly, yep. So, <clears throat> I mean, so we could certainly design the system behind 16 if that makes sure. But that's not one thing is, all right, so this, the systems on B and A, is it A and B? What is that other one called? The ones in the back of the, B. The two B. new systems yep. out back are, they're, you've done enough design work so you know they're under the driveway yep. and those grades work. But we don't, right, so on A we don't see much. Right. But, but you must know from your professional ex experience roughly how high it's going, yeah. right? Yep. So if you're thinking, okay, it's, it's going up four feet, for example, I'm not saying it is, but just right. say, yep. well, then why don't we lay something out that shows that it's six feet or so? You know, you can always drop it down the top, yep. but that way at least we have a grading plan in that area. We can certainly. So that we can, you know, because my concern is if we don't have that <clears throat> and, and if there is an issue or a mm -hmm. perceived issue, we don't have anything really to reflect back. Right. Go back. So it's a little ambiguous there. Sure. I'd rather not have that. Right. So. We can we can basically design the system at, at 16 and add it to the plan, add the grading to the plan. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that would help, at least from my, my standpoint. And I, again, I'm just going to go back, and I don't know, <coughs> Peter, if this is where you're going. You're showing your spot grades at 101 along the driveway. That is based on the anticipation of bringing up the grade on the leaching areas right. just by one foot. Right. So it'll only be a one foot mound on each of those. Right. And that's based on the test pit results and the groundwater right, exactly. levels. Yep. And is the driveway uh, crowned or just uh, flat? How no, just the, flat. Uh, so will it run out flat towards, ground. will it run out towards Pheasant Lane or it's just so, the slope so minimal that it um, won't really have an impact? That's I mean, that's two feet over at two over 50 at the end. Right, yeah. right. But, yeah. but at, the, uh, at the beginning, the first 100 feet or so, it's, uh, you know, it matches existing grade, which is a little bit steeper, I guess. Okay. Coming off of Pheasant Lane, it kind of humps right. up. So that, in that location, it definitely sheds to Pheasant Lane. Yeah, because going from 100 to 96.5, that right. was on, oh, right. that's right. right. There, yep. I'm on the older plan, I think. But. Okay, yeah, but so it it's not going to spill additional right. water right. on here. Right, right, no, exactly. Because it's gravel? Yep even when it's frozen. Sim similar to the tree, I know similar to, I know it's you Similar say, to the existing yeah, conditions. Right, when yeah. the ground's frozen, you get the same amount of what, what, runoff. What's the difference in rates between gravel and just for my own? Uh, I mean, it's, it's obviously a little bit different. The gravel gets yeah. a little more solid than natural so, ground yeah, does. So 10%, I don't know, yeah, yeah, not sure. Probably a little more than that. I look up and everybody's looking at me. <laughs> this is engrossed in the plan. Um, for anybody else on the board before I throw it out to the audience? Was there any update from the fire department on this one? Yeah. No. I think they um, You had said they, they were approved it. okay with it. I thought. Yeah, right. Right. So they're okay with the access and the length of the driveway. I, I think my comment was, and I think that was may have been acknowledged at the last meeting, that it needs to have a pheasant lane address. Right, right. Not for and, and just make sure that it does, which we have a process purposes. internally to ensure that um, things are properly named based on access. Right. Okay. Um, go to the board. So. Um, I'll, I'll ask if there's any public comment. I would just ask, uh, we had a pretty extensive meeting last time and uh, we heard everything that was said and it's all recorded and part of the record. So if there's any new comments, um, feel free. I just, I don't wanna, we don't need to, you know, repeat what was said last time because we, we already heard that. So if you wanna step up to the microphone and identify yourself with your name and address for the record. Great. Erin um, Hooker Thomas, I live at 4 Pheasant Lane, which is in the flood zone, which is going to be in question. Um, I'm not opposed to construction. What I am opposed to is my flood zone increased as of 2017. I went from a flood zone X to a flood zone A, which now it's more than almost, definitely more than doubled, almost tripled what I'm paying in flood insurance. The water is now going to be coming down my way. 
Um, the culvert that is there cannot handle the water that is already coming down there. So my question is, um, because the driveway, it says that it's not supposed to um, impact where or disrupt drainage patterns, but clearly there is water from the backwoods that comes directly in between all the properties there. It floods in the winter. If you call the police station, we have all had police officers come to our house nicely knocking on it, telling us that we need to do something about the water. Um, and there's nothing we can do. The ground freezes, water is coming out of our basement from September through June every single year, and there's nothing we can do with the water. And now it's going to be coming further down towards us. Um, as well, you're going to be removing the trees, which is somewhat not the greatest, but it is helping to hold back some of the water. Um, and as well, is it possible for the planning board to look into having plans in place for the runoff? Stormwater management, there is ledge on 20 and 24 Pheasant Lane, which had to be blasted in order to put those houses in. Um, one of these proposed sites, um, resident two is actually behind that property, which was ledge. So if blasting is needed, should there be a plan in place so that they cannot impact the residents that are already currently on Pheasant Lane? Um, and it would be nice to have a neutral third party monitor to make sure that everything is followed the way that it should be. Okay. Would you like to address that? Well, what's interesting is this is a three lot subdivision. It's, it, it's three lots and it's not technically a subdivision because they've a and the plans and are proposing a common driveway. If it were a three lot subdivision, it would be um, required to have stormwater management, it would be subject to stormwater management review under the town's local subdivision rules and regulations. Just to fill you in, the town of Milton just had a project like this and it was three houses and they are currently having to pay a significant amount of money because there was water problems already and then they allowed a division to be put in and now it intensified and now the de developer and the town will be figuring out who's paying for that problem. And that just happened on Brush Hill Road. They proposed it back in 2015 and as of 2019, the town is paying for it with the developer. They're trying to figure out who's paying that bill. So, uh, Again, part of the reason the bylaw requires or, or indicates that it's one of the performance standards for a common driveway is that they can't disrupt the stormwater pattern is to um, prevent issues down the road mm -hmm. um, from stormwater, from changes in those patterns that now is depositing water in areas it wasn't previously. That's why the board and, and I have asked for additional um, contours and elevations to demonstrate that they will have positive flow mm -hmm. um, consistent to what the pattern was previously. Right. Yeah, which, you know, we've all clearly stated that there's plenty of issues. We've all that have lived on Pheasant Lane have been there 30, 30 plus years, have been there 38 years. I know the bridges have been there longer than me. We've all seen the water issues and we've all seen the frozen roads and we've all seen the police officers on the roads saying that we have to move our water, which we can't do. There's nowhere to put it. Um, and I'm not opposed to building. What I am opposed to is my house flooding, my street flooding worse, and having more police officers on my road telling me that I need to move water when I have nowhere to put it. So there needs to be some kind of plan in place because now you're removing trees, which is fine, but there needs to be some kind of plan in place to say, yeah, we're not going to further impact the residents that have been there since the late 70s, early 80s. So, Stephanie, I'm assuming both of these lots will be going to CONCOM, right? Yes, yes. they have to go back. And so, well, so we look at this, real, so for, for, for folks at home, you know, so building these houses, adding mm -hmm. some, increasing the impervious area, um, doesn't increase the amount of water that falls on the lot, but it cha may change how it flows. So the I'm assuming CONCOM is going to require the gutters 
and Don supposed to go into an infiltration mm -hmm. system. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm assuming when the road shows that it reflects existing grain, draining, drainage, excuse me, grading, um, So Scott, when you designed this, I'm trying to think how we can explain it. So when you design this, um, you calculate, for example, the quantity of runoff from the driveway on the two new lots. Does that take? Does uh, that uh, like when you when you? I know you don't hear because it's yeah. not required. When we when go to the conservation commission, we'll just look at the runoff from the rooftops that we can collect in the gutters and downspouts and reintroduce that back into the uh, into the ground and ultimately into the groundwater that way. So that way it, it uh, you know, the amount of, of infiltration is the same after construction. So right. that's, yeah. uh, that's how we do it. The, the driveway, we, at this point where it's a gravel driveway, we don't do anything uh, typically for the driveway, it's just for the roof. I'd like to ask a question. Is the driveway being, con you, you keep referencing a gravel driveway mm -hmm. and depending on the construction of the gravel driveway, it either provides some um, pervious uh, aspects, characters, mm -hmm. or it doesn't. Right. Um, most gravel driveways, when they're constructed, aren't constructed to infiltrate water, mm -hmm. and they don't. And over time, they're, they become hard packed, and mm -hmm. they're pretty much um, as impervious as a roadway. Is it your intent? Was it your intent to construct this so it infiltrated water? Because then you'd need to provide designs showing right. um, the construction, the engineering for that. Mm. It wasn't designed to, to infiltrate. I mean, an another reason for you know, using a gravel driveway is, right. at least initially, I, I, I believe, is because it's cost effective mm. it, versus doing a paved Paving driveway. the whole thing, right, a longer length. But if you're doing it, it for the per so it sounds like you're kind of referencing it as though it was pervious, mm -hmm. but it's but you haven't designed it to be right, a pervious right, exactly. gravel driveway. Right, that's right. So in that case, the, the driveway going to the street, it would carry water more quickly than than existing conditions. Well, more than the mm -hmm. oh, certainly it would. Yeah. Right, yeah. certainly more than what's there now for sure. So uh, you know, mm -hmm. like any other driveway that's yeah that's come before yeah. you guys. So, I mean, typically for, you know, for a single family home or a driveway. Oh, I know, right, yeah, there's no. We don't do yes. drainage calculations is. No, I understand. You know, it's really yeah, not. A lot of people have a driveway that does right. it. And again, I, I do just want to point out that if this were a typical subdivision, it would be a three lot subdivision. It would be subject to stormwater management under the, the Rules and rules. Right, rules. but it's not. It's right. an existing lot right. where a house is being demolished and rebuilt into right. two estate lots being, or common driveway lots. And we have to remember this is planning board. And in Easton, like other towns, sometimes there's a multi board approach. So we have the items that are under our purview. And then, and sometimes there's different orders. Sometimes people go to CONCOM simultaneously with planning board, sometimes people go to CONCOM first. Here, yeah, it really needed to start with playing board where, where it's a special permit. Right. It's, it's no sense going forward right. if it gets denied. Right. And <clears throat> so, and as a resident of Pequonicut, not that far from you guys, just kind of over, follow the power lines, <clears throat> I have the exact same soil issues. You go two feet down. I put, I did an addition 15 years ago, um, built it in the middle of August. It hadn't rained for six, six weeks, and I hit water two and a half feet down because we have these giant clay swaths of clay everywhere that just locked that water in. And then my house was built in 1815, so I'm, I was way below the water table. And I have three sump pumps that run year round. Sometimes a little heavier in the spring than this time of year, but what they do. Water management is, is um, certainly an issue for many of us in Easton, and, and I, I hear all what you're saying. Um, and a lot of our bylaws, <coughs> excuse me, were, were written with this in order, but you, you know, you're never gonna get the perfect bylaw. You, you've got three or four people in a room working on it. You're never gonna anticipate every situation. So we just try to, we try to get everybody to work together. We try to communicate as much as we can. So tonight we're demonstrating, for example, okay, we're not 
totally tight with, with the grading yet. We need, sure. we need to show this. And, you know, and to Stephanie's point, you know, you know when I hear people say they're going to do uh, pervious pavement, I always laugh because, you know what, pervious pavement is, is a dry, is pavement that's designed to, to let water percolate through it. But if you don't vacuum that out every three months, it's, it's impervious. And I've, 31 years I've lived in Easton, and I haven't seen a vacuum truck yet. Um, but I would think a gravel driveway is, is still going to, I, and I don't know, I'm not an engineer, I'm not a license engineer, so I'm not sure, but that's going to take in, a, it's, you're still going to percolate a little more because you're, you're basically going to have two, you know, you're going to have your tire pass, which are going to get packed in mm -hmm. and, and be like concrete, but you know, maybe a little bit, but you, you wouldn't, but to Stephanie's point, you wouldn't design your, your drainage around. It depends on if there's two inches of process and then some gravel right. or if it's gravel. But in the sense of the area, I'd still rather have a gravel driveway versus, yeah. you know, bituminous, mm -hmm. right? A 15-foot swath of that. So, uh, forgive me, I'm not very good at thumbing through an index and talking at the same time. So I just want to get to the uh, bylaws section, which I used to know by heart until they changed them all. So come on, all right, 232. Bear with me here for a sec. Greg, can I interrupt you for Oh, go right ahead, go right ahead. Okay, so you said this started with you, but it, this actually started with the Conservation Commission on April 1st, where they talked to Mr. McLaughlin and Holmgren saying that markers were in the incorrect spot. Then one of them was off by 20 feet. So it actually started with the Conservation Commission. Okay. Yes, it has moved to you. And then it has to go back to the Conservation Commission. But that's the other reason I thought it would be a good idea to have an unbiased 53G done so that someone could come in and just make sure everything's accurate. What was the marker? It was a property. It was WFG13. <laughs> one of the wetland flags. Oh, one of the wetland flags. I mean, typically when a large area like this is flagged by a botanist, another botanist will look at it and disagree with a couple of flags and that's what happened here. Yeah. Right. I, it can be negligence or it can be human error, one or the it, other, but it wouldn't be a bad idea for the town to just come out and be like, hey, this is okay to build and protect I, everyone. Again, if I could pro provide clarification, I believe the process you're referencing was an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation. Yes. That's correct. And I believe it, it concluded and an or, a res, um, order was issued. Yes, it was. So that would have been resolved through the Conservation it Commission. Was. The Planning Board doesn't resolve um, conflicts with wetlands lines. Right. I was just stating that yeah. it didn't start here. It actually, they've right. gone before Conservation Commission, that it's come here and it's going to have to go back to Conservation Commission. Um, th thank you for that. So, if you get Section 235.32 of our Town of Easton Bylaws, Common Driveways, um, lists out a bunch of things. But the one thing that's pertinent to what we're talking about right now, uh, the number seven, the common driveway shall not disrupt existing drainage patterns. A grading and sloping plan showing existing and proposed conditions shall be submitted with the special permit application to demonstrate compliance with this requirement. So this is a special permit. It isn't by right, but at the same time, we, we still are somewhat guided by these documents, which have been, you know, vetted through the community through the years and voted on at town meeting. Um, so that's, <clears throat> you know, I get back to that two two prong approach w with uh, ourselves and and conservation. Um, we um, this this isn't required to have stormwater management. Um, this we have. We have um, we have a licensed engineer who's who's presenting the project. We have the director of planning, and we have quite a bit of experience on the board ourselves. With all that taken into account, we also will rely on conservation, um, not because we don't want to step on their toes, but because we sort of have a, a defined set of responsibilities. And in fairness to applicants, we don't want to you know, double over, you know, so this board requires this and then it's going to get overruled by that board. So we try to stay, we try to stay within our lane, you know, so to speak. Um, so I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that I think I'm fairly confident <clears throat> given 13 years on this board um, and 31 years in town involved in a lot of this that um, when all is said and done, uh, this project you know, if approved, we'll have gone through all of, we've gone through a, a, you know, a vigorous 
diligent and, and well-intentioned review by the by the boards, the town volunteers, and the town staff, um, and the and the engineers, so that we can, you know, so we don't increase the the issues down downstream, if you will. We, we can't control water table. We can't control pre-existing conditions. Um, we can we can require details that don't add to it in adverse ways. And, and that's, that's our job and, and that's what we try to do. And I think we usually do a pretty good job at it. So um, I know that might not sound like much, but um, that, that, that's the approach we take. Um, and I can't, you know, there's, there's only, you know, we can't, we just can't step beyond our, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to step on the toes of CONCOM, because I know they're going to go through quite a, a vigorous review on this. Um, we have to look at this more from a, from a planning standpoint, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So, if anybody can speak, you just need to grab the microphone and identify yourself with your address, please. My name is Marshall Dost. I live at 20. I did speak at the last meeting, so I won't go through all of that. But uh, I have a couple of primary concerns, um, one of them being all of my neighbors down at the end of the street, because I've lived there for 35 years, and I know what they have gone through. And there is ledge that they had to blast to get my house in. They had to blast to get my neighbor's house in, and there is ledge in my yard right up to the corner of the pro one of the proposed building lots. My guess is there's ledge over there too. And if they blast, they will alter the drainage patterns. Just putting the driveway in itself will alter the drainage patterns. And you already know that. You already know that. Mr. Strange here recalled his situation down in Paquanicut that a neighbor cut down trees and he said, and it changed the drainage patterns. That's what we're trying to stop. This cannot change. My other issue is that the two septic systems are situated in a place where the water runs down, right over where the water runs down between my property and 16 Pheasant Lane and goes right out and onto the street. I know water flows east to west but not when we've had rain and heavy rain. It comes in all directions. And it starts flooding between my house and 16 Pheasant and every house down and houses across the street. They all get it. Everyone here has water in their basement. Um, you know, I don't appreciate this issue being trivialized by Mr. McLaughlin saying that all we're looking for is one simple thing. This is not one simple thing. This is a major issue in our lives. So please look at this very carefully. And don't rush any decisions to approve this because we don't believe that the homework has been done and there needs to be a lot more homework done on this development. Thank you. Uh, for the record, just since my name came up, uh, I, I didn't say when my neighbor took the trees down and changed the drainage pattern, I said it, it killed my vegetable gardens. But <laughs> you, you actually, you actually and, did and say I and I would, I would, um, I, I would also I, I ledge, you know, is is not really, <clears throat> it's not indicated on these plans very often, and I don't, I probably should, you know, blasting ledge very often aids. It's like fracking. It aids. It aids in. in uh, no one knows what's going to happen. When, when I don't see where blasting would cause um, necessarily an adverse impact. And no one is and, 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 and I'll, sir, and I'll say what I said last week. People at last meeting, you know, folks have, and why I brought up the trees in my house. If you don't own the property, folks have a right to try to develop their land, just like your houses were all built. Your houses were all, I'm sure, fully wooded at one point. Filled with animals and wetlands, but you know, and I get it. We we all like to control our, our environment and things around us. And and believe me, I understand high water tables. Um, but we do as best we can to live with them. 
Um, I had 18 houses built around me, on an, or 15 houses, on an old farm. Um, and, um, you know, I didn't own the land, and those folks had a right to develop the land as allowed by the Town of Easton bylaws, or within those bylaws. So, um, I'll, I'll, just, I'll just say that. So, um, anybody else in the audience? Okay, anybody else on the board? So, I think at this point, we've certainly discussed some of the grading mm -hmm. um, that we need to deal with. And, did I miss anything, Stephanie? So, I think we should continue. I would agree, this. please. Um, two weeks out to our next meeting. Right? Sure, and please. Can I ask a question? <coughs> Grab the microphone. Well, you say continue. Oh, it's you. Yeah, but you still have to get the microphone. <laughs> I'm just asking why continue. I'm not, I want to understand the process. Because we need more information on the plans. Oh, okay. So you agree with that? Yes. Yeah, there's... He, he can, he I can. want to ask him. Sure. No, no okay. problem. Uh -huh. So more information on the plan. We'll continue? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Great. Um, Stephanie, can you ask, find out from the police the extent of the... How, many, how frequently they have to go to ask people to... Stop water from running down their yards. I'm just interested in. I, I I suppose I could. I mean, is that I don't know how else I'd know. I mean, they didn't have a car. I, I don't know if they have it segregated like that. I, I, I don't know. I'm sure that? I could get even, an, even an anecdotal. I'm sure um, I know, could. I don't like to deal like with anecdotal yeah. information like oh. that. But well, I could. They said, you know, I mean, if if the board felt it was important. They said every few years that would be, you know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, if the board if felt they said it was, every year or a few times I, a year. I I think the drainage calculations what's needed um, yeah, I, I do I think the if we ask the police department could provide information on visits mm -hmm. to that area and by the month yeah I mean we don't want to go through all that I, I don't know I mean if yeah. it's sometimes they know if there's a if there's a sort of a, 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 a recurring a, problem right. in regarding Gregory anything April. Even, yeah. yeah sometimes you know, April, yeah. they are on our streets because mm -hmm. the people up above that fly down our streets are skidding on our street and then they're calling because it's a road hazard. So anytime between January and April, that's when they're coming by, parking in front of our yard and stopping at our houses, telling us to move our water pipes that are flowing out because we have two pipes out of our basement. So unless they have a plan as to where would they want us to put it, it's going to be a problem. So, so it's not water that's flowing over land that oh, they're, yeah, asking to move. they're asking you to move the pipes that are the sump pumps that yes. are oh, pumping, pumping water into they're the roadway. They're pumping water onto the road or they're pumping it onto our driveways which the ground's frozen. It's not going into our front yards. It's going down onto the roads. Yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes when we look at these, you know, someone would say, okay, no problem. I'll, just, I'll put some, I'll put some gravel drains along, along that property line over this property line and, and people's begin to feel more comfortable with that, but it doesn't sound like that's the direction you're interested in going, so um, so we'll see where this ends up. Well, the problem is, as you all know, Pheasant Lane, until it got repaved, what, five years ago, that was <laughs> that road had more frost heaves than probably anything in town, because everything drains north to south there. It settles under that road, which wasn't built to modern standards, and, and that's when ice, you know, water collects under that road through the years. Um, and and that, that road gets beat up and it's going to need to be repaved soon. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and sometimes it's even a chance to actually sort of improve a neighborhood condition, then then hopefully just not change it. Where if it's if it's a um, cost effective, not you know, if it's not an overly burdensome um, process while there's construction going on there. But sure. um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how the plan looks in a couple of weeks. Well, just if I I, I just don't want to mislead anybody. I mean, I don't know what we're. Yeah. What we could do. It's not a matter of not wanting okay, to do right. anything, like mm -hmm. you just said. I mean, we're yeah. willing to do what we can, but we can't fix drainage issues on Pheasant Lane or the culvert that's down the road that's no, I probably no, undersized. No, and and yeah, nobody asked you to. That. We don't no, need to go down that road. Right. But, you know, I, we get this all the time, and I, and I don't mean to trivialize what you guys are going through. We, every time there's a new lot or subdivision or two lots, it's, 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 it's in front of us. And a, the vast majority of our town was built prior to... Um, Wastewater management and standards, and our stormwater. Stormwater, sorry, it's, it's been a long day. Stormwater. Probably management. in yeah. wastewater things are a lot closer. Too, the reason our houses are also wet because we're we're very close, if not below the water table, and 
you know, unfortunately, that is not a way to void someone, <coughs> uh, um, someone developing their land. Um, but I, I understand everything I'm hearing tonight. And I, boy, I wish the towns, all the towns, I wish we had more money because it would be great. You, you know, there's a way to solve this, but <laughs> it's, it's catch basins and, and detention basins. But it's not the responsibilities of these gentlemen because this, that road catches the water of 30 or 40 houses. Um, so, so, Greg, to your point, 100%, right? So this existing plan, <clears throat> I don't think has been presented to the board prior to us even doing anything two years ago, shows it's, there's, a, there's a flood zone goes right through the property and there's a 30 inch culvert that goes underneath the road, underneath the houses of the residents that are there. And obviously in certain situations, so much water flows across 10 acres of land to a, a 30 inch culvert that goes under the road, it, it can't suck all the water underneath to get to where it needs to go. And so it backs up and it floods these areas and floods the basements. Our development's way up here, right? It has nothing to do with anything to do with this, you know, this, this federally designated flood zone, which is on Bay Road. So I'm not sure if everyone understands. I mean, it's, it's kind of like to look at a visual to understand what's happening. Everything is wet. And, but the, 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 the primary zone is this area. And, and the, the residents we're talking to, and I, I feel terrible about it. So it's, but that's where your houses are, you know, at, at the bottom of the culvert. And so I just want to, if you haven't seen it, I'll, I'll, I'll give everyone a, a copy of this plan. This, I, I did this two years ago. I had it all flagged, tried to understand it, and that's what caused this process to say, maybe we can do something in this little tiny corner way over here. The rest of it is all natural. I can't touch it, it's conservation land. So I, I'm gonna sit down and be silent. But that, that's, I just, if, if no one understands it, it's, it's important to look at, that's all. It floods in between here too, because this is where the puddling is. That is where the puddling is that the police officers have come and told us that we need to, I'm down here. I'm on Pheasant Lane, you're right, like, I'm in the flood zone, clearly the back corner of my garage and I pay almost $1,500 a month for flood insurance, which is ridiculous. But it's right here that it gets very dangerous right there, as well as right there, and it freezes, which, and then it will go down eventually, but that's where it puddles and freezes on the roads. Okay, other cases? Are there catch basins on that? No. There aren't. There's, there's one by me. There's one by Walter, which would be right there. Down that the, flood. Near the culvert there is. That is the absolute worst flooding. There is an actual current that comes down between those properties. And that's not in a flood zone, for, supposedly. That's not a flood zone. I've been there 38 years. I've watched it. Long before you came. Yes, long before I came. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, is everybody, anybody else? We all set? All right, why don't we continue this to which date? The 20th, uh, 20th or 26th? 26th. 26th. Okay, motion to continue to August 26th. Second. <laughs> um, We're like in a. <laughs> One, All two, three. <laughs> oh, yeah. Four zero. All right. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you, folks. Appreciate Thank your you. input. Yeah. All right. Um, next up is 58 Mill Street. I'm, I'd like to take a two minute recess. I got to get a glass of water. So, Wayne, can we take a five minute break, Wayne? Yeah. Oh, we're going to take a five minute break. <laughs> break. I know you get, get mad, but I don't know. <laughs> I need to get to the
hearing that pretty clear. Yeah. yeah. Why some of the right. Around that time. Around that time, we were going through another yeah. round. Yeah. 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 Y
has it depicted as a zone A, but it is a straight zone A, not a zone A that has been definitively stated and mapped out with the elevation. The only thing we really have to go on is the actual FEMA maps, and I can distribute a few of these to the board for your review. Uh, the maps, I, I can't speak for who or how they were prepared, but if you will look very closely at the map, uh, you will see that the floodplain line comes across the property very close to the head of the driveway of the existing um, home that is on the property. There's an existing um, building right up here, head of the driveway. It's got the floodplain line coming right up through this area on the property. It completely misses the wetland area. Uh, if you were to plot out uh, the, the actual location is shown on the FEMA map. You'd find that the stream is outside the floodplain, but yet this area up here that's actually uh, along the crest of a ridge is within the floodplain. Um, just, just a little, just a little misplotting on the map. Is but that is one reason. Yeah. Is it off like an equal distance along the, the line? Excuse me? Is it off like an equal distance along the line? Or is it uh, right? Not really, no. It, it's, um, it just was not definitively studied. That is one reason that uh, Dr. Wang has put in the time to do a, a complete floodplain study. Uh, and he is in the process of submitting the results of his, flood, of his study to FEMA. Uh, and he's re, uh, going for a letter of uh, map amendment. Once that letter of map amendment or LOMA is issued, we will have a definitive established accepted floodplain line. Uh, these plans, as far as showing the floodplain on the plans and the light areas, are based upon Dr. Wang's study and, of course, are subject to the approval of FEMA, which, which obviously must take place before uh, this process can be concluded to, to justify the areas that were shown. Uh, but we are confident of Dr. Wang's conclusions on that. There is a existing culvert that comes under Mill Street and actually goes quite a distance across this property, terminates in a headwall. Uh, actually, it's, it's two culverts, two 18-inch uh, reinforced concrete pipes side by side. The existing driveway that services the home, which I say services the home, the home is there right now. Uh, but the driveway that did service the home crosses that culvert. Uh, we are proposing with our drainage, uh, and we have been meeting, as I indicated, with conservation on this, to open up a portion of the culvert, to remove a small portion across here. Uh, that will it's something the conservation wanted to see a little daylight to call for any of the amphibians or any uh, small critters traveling through it. It won't be quite as long, dark tunnel. Uh, I've been told that that's advantageous for them, although that's not my field. Uh, so we'll be opening up a portion of it and adding a new <coughs> portion underneath the proposed roadway. Uh, we have designed two detention basins. One will be on each side of the road with the drainage flowing into the uh, stream and wetlands from there. Frank, is that sheet two of two? Excuse me? Is that sheet two of two you're looking at? This is sheet one, one, of, one of one on the proposed the watershed plan. It's sheet okay. number seven of the subdivision set that I'm looking at now. Page six or something. <laughs> yeah. It's sheet seven of 12. Then. The way they, they render so slowly, it's sort of hard. Just don't <laughs> rotate it or you lose it all. <laughs> you have to go like this. <laughs> sudden motion. The way the plans are numbered, sheets are numbered. Oh, do we have a printed one that we could look at? <sighs> That. That'll be much faster. Be Do we have to look at it sideways? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> if you would like. There you go, kid. Thank you. Sorry, Frank. A little on. levity on the part of the board. <laughs> Frank, you said you were on, again, one of one? What did you say? One sheet one of three. one on the one proposed one. watershed <laughs> plan. Proposed. Sheet seven of the subdivision set. Got it. Oh, 
yeah. Motion to deny. <laughs> <laughs> and again, I will, I will not go into too much detail on this because this is the drainage aspects that I will uh, hold off and allow Dr. Wang to uh, explain. It is his design that we're looking at here. So I just wanted to briefly introduce it to the, to the uh, planning board. Um, the, the following sheet, which is roadway plan and profile, uh, you can see, a little clearer see the detention bases. It's at a little more of a convenient scale for everyone to, to follow. Uh, both, both of the basins are designed with, with uh, sediment core bays. We have provided an erosion control plan. Uh, we're proposing to completely uh, surround all the area of disturbance uh, with the uh, siltation control barriers. Uh, this area over here, which would be the far easterly corner of the site, is an area that we are not allowed to touch. That, that's an area that natural heritage has set aside. There is a mapped out vernal pool that is approximately 500 feet east of us. Uh, but because of the migratory patterns of some of the uh, invertebrates that in inhabit the uh, vernal pool, natural heritage was extremely concerned with this area for mi migration patterns. Uh, that is why they have restricted the amount of development that we can do on the site. Uh, we basically cannot touch, in fact, we've noted right on it, uh, natural heritage restoration area, which is a very small area back in this, uh, this portion here. There's currently an open field, uh, but they want us to do some restoration plantings within that, that field area. Uh, we have recognized the planning board's uh, solar orientation guidelines or requirements. I understand the guidelines require that 80% of the homes meet the standard uh, alignments. Of these of six homes, five of the six meet the requirements, therefore we ex slightly exceed the 80% threshold with the solar orientation. Which one doesn't? Which one does not? Uh, lot number four, in fact, the, the orientation angle even noted in red on lot number four mm -hmm. to, to show that that one's the one that does not comply. Um, I did get a copy of the staff report. Uh, a couple of uh, points I will bring out. The under one an easy one to take care of. Item number 24, the reviewer stated that uh, street light de detail is provided, but I cannot find the light location on the plan. That was my fault. The, it was designed with the street lights. However, uh, the layer on the CAD plan that, that had the street lights was turned off during the time that they were plotted. Um, I, I turned that on. I ran a print of it just, just for demonstration purposes. Frank, you three caught me at points in the past. I really thought that I must be missing it. <laughs> no, <laughs> you did not miss it. It, it was not on the plan. The There's three street lights proposed. There's one right at the intersection of our new roadway with Mill Street. There's one in the arc of the curve right at the lot line between lots five and six. And there's one proposed at the very end of the cul-de-sac. Um, yeah, they're on the solar orientation plan also. Are, the, are those the lights of the hydrants? Because I couldn't, on the, they on the solar They appear plans. to be in the same spot. They yeah. are yeah, in they're, the same Yeah, they're, they're very close to the hydrants. Yes, yeah. Yep. Um, the reviewer also was questioning the lot width. Um, if I may read the comment. Under design and layout, states the zoning bylaw dimensional and density table, footnote 12, states continuous minimum lot width shall require that each residential lot shall have 150 feet of frontage width and at least 100 feet of horizontal distance between the side lot lines at the minimum front yard depth of 100 feet for residential lots. All lots ex 
except lot three have sufficient frontage. And lot three, of course, is the one that we were talking about with the estate lot. Uh, lots one and six do not comply with the continuous minimum lot width requirement. See diagram. Well, the diagram that was attached shows a dimension of less than 100 feet to a, a one, of, one point of depth. However, uh, both of those lots in question do have the required width. The regulation states that we have to have a minimum of 100 feet of lot width at, at minimum of 100 feet of depth. Uh, lot one actually has over 444 feet of lot width, and lot six has 142 feet of lot width. Yeah, that's how I, on lot six, that's how I pitched it. I would have measured it before you gave me this. Yeah. That's why I said. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, they were probably thinking along the whole length, but this is for more of the lot width is for the house, the placement. house, for house placement, which is kind of. I think I've touched on, on most of the key aspects of the project. Um, certainly be happy to respond to any questions that I have an answers to. And like I said, at, at future meetings, um, I know Dr. Wang will be here to respond to some of the drainage questions, and I also understand that the plans uh, have been sent out to Kern and Woodard um, for their review, and we're awaiting their, their comments on the drainage, which I'm sure they will have some that we will be addressing to the board as well. Okay. Stephanie, do you have any? Um, okay, so Mr. Ripeland has addressed a couple of my, and, and I think that's, that's just one I've been grappling with, the lot width to the depth of 100 feet and between the side lot lines. And it, again, if that's, if that's the way the board's interpreting that, that's fine. That will give me guidance going forward in doing my review, uh, as opposed to the side, side lot lines from where it intersects with the road. I can't remember if the bylaw is that specific. I think I would have included it in my comments if it was that specific. So yeah, I will just double. Ways to look at that. I, I, so right. You know and this you is, have an objection to the way that they're presenting I, it. I don't have a, an objection if this is the way the board's interpreting it. And if it doesn't, the bylaw doesn't specifically state where the side lot lines intersect. So we maybe we need to review so that. It's not like setting like a precedent. We can't just. It's hard to know how to explain that. In this it case, is. it has so much frontage and an odd shape. And, and your yeah. lot line. We need, we need, what we need to do is, yeah. is change to a circle. Yes, you know, we yes. We need to change it, to a circle it makes it's it. about house placement. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll, I'll look at that and see, but if this is in, and I really appreciate that Mr. Ryland's taken the time to. Well, if there were a neighbor on behind there that didn't want a house behind their home, then they would. <laughs> They would obviously take the other interpretation. Well, right, so and that I, I think that yeah. Greg's right that and at also, some point I mean, it needs to be. Looks like you matched the uh, the, the radius of the road. Correct. Uh, I, I I kept the hundred feet, you know, full. Yeah, I would have made it right along. straight. I would have, would have right. So that. <laughs> so. And you still could have done that, right? Because yeah, yeah so. Um, I I do want to get to some of the other comments that I had. Um, so number seven, I, my comment there is just that if the letter of map amendment is not accepted or not accepted is as you We have it problems out, if it is not accepted. Right, that the lot lines are very different and, 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 and the development, the ability to develop because of the floodplain. So that's a comment that's critical for the board to get that information. I know Woodard and Curran has asked for that too. They want Certainly. to review that as part of their review, and I, um, I believe that makes a lot of sense. Um, let's see. The plan does not show locations of test pits. It does. Uh, the where, existing where condition are those? sheet. Uh, because I, again, I look for those. Existing condition sheet, which is sheet number, no, that's the existing water sheet. I guess it's sheet four, I believe it is. Yeah, sheet four. 
uh, shows the test bits. Okay, these these plans are numbered one of one of two, and they they start numbering. So, what is the title of that plan sheet? Sheet four. You can see uh, we have test bits. What? I, I'm sorry, Frank. What is the the title of the, the plan title sheet? block? Uh, existing conditions plan. Is that? Okay, how many sheets? And you said it's number four? Sheet number four, yes. Sheet four of 12. Okay. Four of 12 is written right All right, it doesn't, it's, it's two not titled. Two, it's not, and this one four is. Four of four isn't titled. It's de titled definitive subdivision. Oh, there it is. Exists. Okay. Oh, there they are. Yep. Never mind. And you saw the, let's see, um, then my comment on the orientation was that I thought that lot, um, the houses on lot one, three, and four, you said they all met, but. Can't work like this. <laughs> that the 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 lo long end of the the length of the house should be situated between you know is subdivision, right? between the easterly to westerly. So okay. it looked to me like lot three could be positioned better. So the diagram in the regulation uh, shows really oh. four possible areas of rotation around the primary axis. And you're identifying the primary axis. The primary axis yeah. being? Yep. Yeah. He'd on each of the lots. And, and we've given the actual angular rotation mm -hmm. noted on every one of them. And then the, um, the water division did provide a comment. I know initially they approved the plan in the comments uh -huh. and I think they didn't realize that I you were requesting a waiver of the um, looping of the main. So. Right. Um, I, I, I believe Mr. Mills will be discussing that with the water superintendent. Yeah. We'd love to loop it, but we can't for a couple of reasons. First of all, we have no, no ownership or no, no way to cross the private property at the Peabody, but also that would require that the water main go right through the area up here that Natural Heritage mm -hmm. has said that we can't touch. Right. So I think what he may require is an alternative, which I think yeah, he did we'll, on. We'll, have, we'll discuss that with right. the water department yeah. and, and get their sign off on that. Right. And then, of course, the environmental planner commented on the mapped habitat and communications yes. with natural heritage and a conservation management plan. I think that was the extent of my comments. OK. Um, so you just discussed the water loop, so I don't have to do that. Um, the estate lot. Yes. Why the estate lot? And why not just make the road a little longer? Uh, again, natural heritage was, was really uh, trying to, to get us to keep it as short as possible, um, adding length to the road. Not, not only costs the developer more money to build it, but it also costs the town more money to maintain it. Um, but the area at the end of the road, you're going to tell you because it's related entire, to the topo, right? Where it goes uphill, and you're trying to stay uphill, out. Uphill, but that. again, the this entire area yep. is area that uh, natural heritage is said we can't touch. Okay. Uh, they they want to keep the uh, migratory corridor open. Uh, and again, bringing the road any longer would have pretty well blocked that. And that would have cut off for the migratory corridor they wanted this entire area over here. So it, we, we did spend close to two years right. going over with so them. Where's my best place? Well, forgive me, this is the first time seeing these sure. full size. Um, so where do I want to look and see the no touch zone on lot number three? The, you know, the area that 
Um, natural Heritage doesn't want you to. That is on some of the documentation we have submitted to Natural Heritage. I don't believe it's on these plants, and we will certainly supply that information. So that will end up on the plants? Is that what you mean? Yeah, well, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think let, let's, let, let's make sure we get that on it. Because that's, you know, it's one thing, it's interesting, you know, that a couple of years ago we had the subdivision up the street from you guys um, mm -hmm. on Mill Street, and I was always, I always thought the dealings, you know, as a planning board member, I thought the dealings, I kept hearing about National Heritage, oh, National Heritage won't let us do this or this, Nat but I, I never saw anything on the plans, and it was kind yeah. of this ambiguous thing, and I saw this giant force, and I couldn't get answers from CONCOM, <laughs> and I saw this giant force that was, but I didn't really understand it, <laughs> you know, because of what, like, where, where, are the, where are the regulations, where, you, we, know, you know what I'm saying, so. Um, if I so cannot if clearly, if I cannot clearly show it, if I cannot clearly show it on the plant, I will add another sheet that shows right. it. Yeah. So that, so but that just because I because I think that goes along because I, I I I'm troubled with the precedent of a of a um, state lot mm -hmm. on a on a on a subdivision. On a subdivision. Okay. Part of me says if you're going conventional, should you just be allowed to do what you can do conventionally? Why why are we mixing conventional? And special permits, but if you tell me what you just, I look, you know, to the to layman. Well, I'm not a layman, but looking at this, I go, oh, they just don't want to dig into that hill. But now, no. what you, there's nothing on this plan that tells me what you just did, keeping this corridor open. So I, I want to get that on the plan, so the board will understand it, so I'll understand, mm -hmm. it, and, and so we have something to to show mm -hmm. the town of Easton now or up the road or you know. Mm -hmm. Actually, we have already lost one lot because of natural heritage. We did have a longer road, and there were two lots here instead of just the one and we had to cut it back to that uh to, to save okay. that area yeah so if we could just you know graphically get that in that'd be good and then so i know we did my question is we should probably do a site walk right because we, we have at least a couple new members and i can't even did we do you i know you and i were one. up there was oh the, i yeah did we have the whole board up there or? i actually wasn't up there i missed the site walk and oh, yeah, went I up afterwards I, walk, I, but the yeah. board oh, was, i think the board did do was, a site walk it was gary is that what you're saying? It was like before yeah. you were planning. I know, no, I it, it right, was yeah. I. It was scheduled, and I couldn't get there oh, in I, time. I, I got there after everybody had left. Okay. okay. Um, do you remember? I mean, I, I know I was up there a couple times, but I. I, I do remember I'm the planning sure board a, did have a site walk yeah. uh, at the preliminary subdivision right. stage. Yeah, okay. I remember staking out the center line of the road sure. for that site walk. I cannot sit here and recall exactly yeah. who was. Yeah, right. so was no, so I wasn't sure oh, it was right. just like me right. and yeah. you for a preliminary, but if you weren't there, then. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we have two new members, so I, I think it makes sense we should yes. schedule it. Um, but maybe the way to do that, since we're missing two members right now. No, oh, we're only missing one member right now. Right. In, in terms That's of right. actual but members. Um, we should probably still maybe we do it via email. Just to ch no sense scheduling it if it's not going to work for Robert, right? You know what I'm saying? Or should we schedule one and hope he can make it? What do you think? I I like the idea of just soliciting everyone and doing it. Yeah. So. That, and that way we know we can you can talk yeah. to Greg and see what works best. For okay. So you'll. Yes. You'll have ping up yep. and all right. Yeah. yeah. Um, give, give me a little bit of time because, again, I know it's been a couple of years. Yeah. The roadway stakes in line, I'm, I'm right. sure, have disappeared, yep. and it will need to be re remarked for you. Otherwise, you just walk yeah, into just, the woods I mean, Just a couple. Do the, you, you, know, you do the center of the cul de sac, do the center of the curve, right. yeah. do the entrance off of Mill. Okay. Because uh, it's a pretty simple road, right? Yeah. I, mean, I, I do want to add one other point. Uh, I realize that Mill Street has recently been paved. Uh, prior to its paving, uh, the, the owner did tap into the water, the existing uh, municipal water main on Mill Street and brought the line off the edge of the road so that we would not have to save himself a lot of money. Right. That, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right. Smart. That was one of the comments from the yeah. DPW, but right. I do remember because right. we get a call on that. Mm -hmm. So, and then you, I, just because I know you, you touched on the water main, so it sounds like there's going to be an alternative solution. It, it's, it is going to get looped. That someone has an idea or something? No, 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 I'm, I'm just saying that they, they, they <laughs> passed the water main and got it all. No, 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 but I'm, I'm about to, 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 to go over to the adjoining it, street. It's that you need to bring in a, it, there needs to be along the front. You can't. Know, on looping the, to the adjacent subdivision is what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, we, we will have to get with the water department on that, but I don't see a way that can be done, but that's something okay. Mr. Mills will be discussing with so the water did, department. Did you see the comment from the DPW? I did see okay. that, yes. So just, yeah, so that's. 
It's going to have to be dealt with, obviously. Um, okay. Anybody else? You guys have any questions or comments at this point? Um, just maybe just to clarify that the um, if we're Discussion. seeing the interpretation of the lot width on of, of the um, this on six. Sure. Um, because it sometimes we might interpret it meaning along the first 150 feet along the actual frontage. In this case, it does not provide that. Just so we can move in the right direction now and don't, right. don't, right. don't, don't go down this road in a month and a half. But looking at what we did at Sierra Hills last year. Yeah, this was how, the, the way the way he depicted it on the plan was how I was thinking I would measure it, but, sure. but I was actually thinking along the 150 feet of frontage, not just. Yeah, so I'll have to take a look at it. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm going to actually take this big set home yeah, kind of early so I can uh, <laughs> review them. Because okay. that's the whole reason we asked for it, mm -hmm. so we could take some home. And I will, I'll pass it on to my neighbor, another planning board member. And He'll tell two friends and so okay. on. So <laughs> I will be happy to furnish additional full size sets if the board would like. Just let me know how many you'd like. And we're probably gonna make you the change the whole thing. So no. The <laughs> mark. The oh, everyone got received a copy of your markup, showing how you calculated it, right? Yeah. The, this red line. Yes. Yeah. 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 Up for those. This is yours. Right. Was yeah. That that, that's, I just handed that out tonight. Gotcha. Yeah. Right, right, right. So that's not on permit eyes. No, that was just something I can't yep. tonight for. Someone's ringing. Oh, okay. Yeah, you'll need, you'll need this as well for the, for the record if you don't already have it. No, or, we, or yeah. Can you provide it? Okay. The van has it and we have access to the floor. Um, do we think it's necessary to have this? I guess it, we don't have to have the site walk before the next meeting. I mean, are, we, are you coming back in two weeks? I believe so. Okay. Should we have the site walk before then? Yeah, where are you at with the Conservation Commission? It, I don't have the exact date, but it's been continued on till first meeting in September, I believe. Do you want to continue with the board or do you want to get through that, at least that next yeah. meeting with the Conservation Commission? Um, I think it may be advantageous uh, to not come back in two weeks. I, I believe we may be wasting the board's time if we come back that quickly. Um, so yeah. September 9th is the next. So if, if the, our meeting is the 9th, then theirs would be the 16th, right? Because I don't think they're meeting the first, that first week. I think Labor Day is that first week in September. Right, the second is Labor so, Day. So um, I, I would request that we continue to the first meeting in September. If that is insufficient, I can, can contact the board and request a, a further continuous if necessary. Um, that's good. So that's September 9th. Okay. And we'll get, so that gives us, that should give us enough time to get a uh, Site walk. Yeah. yeah. Will we be receiving comments from your review engineer prior to that? If if that you've responded, they were requesting adif additional information. I think. Or th did they have? I had that in my. I order. have not I seen any of their comments. I don't. I don't know if they have, on have on communicated on. directly with uh, Dr. With Wang or not. Shame. Um, let me see. Where's my report? Yeah, they did. They did provide. Thank you. It was attached. So they did provide a comment letter on June 21st. Okay. And there has been no response to that as yet. I checked okay. ahead of this meeting. So, um, and they were asking for the information that's going to be submitted to FEMA. To, um, yeah, to FEMA. Sure. So uh, knowing that I'm pretty sure they had not submitted a response as of <coughs> today. I know they hadn't as of last week. 
the Conservation Commission is meeting tonight, and I think it's, I think it's on their agenda tonight. Um, and I would expect that e any response would require another review. Um, I mean. So you're saying September 9th, the mayor. Well, I, but, but I don't think, I think we should hold it. I, that's. Is yeah, Ms. I'd, I'd rather not push it off too much beyond think, that at right, the moment. If, we may, we may have to through, request it for the continuance, but then, I'd like to, to yeah. keep it moving as best we could. But that, again, that gives us plenty of time to have a uh, sidewalk now and then. I'll make a motion to continue it to the September 9th meeting. Go ahead and second. Second. <laughs> Any further discussion? <laughs> Hearing none, all those in favor? I hear my stomach growl. Four zero. <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> And that will be both the estate lot and the right. Thank you. Okay, thank young you, man. All right, we're almost done, folks. Um, meeting minutes. Did we get in? Yeah, planned to be. Yeah, we did. Should we stop address at Sawmill Village? Um, the person's not coming here. In case anyone's waiting for it, watching TV. I already did twice. Oh yeah, I did. Okay. Yeah. But I, I, I would just like. Oh, I heard five. Okay. I heard Sawmill five. Village, five fifty-eight Boundary Street. Oh, okay, say. It's not coming in tonight. Yeah. We'll do it. Okay. Maybe at our next meeting. Yeah. Yes. Just, just in case yes. people yes. are watching. Is anybody out there? No. In case anyone's up at no one three, right. waiting for that. And, right. Well, if they're still, we'll give them this little treat. Look at here's a dog. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I don't have minutes anyway. Why do I not have minutes? But I must have minutes. In there. Oh, here they are. I got them. I, I stand corrected. Um, 15th. Make a motion to approve the July 15th minutes as presented. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Motion passes. Monday, July 23rd. This is our meeting with Judy. Uh, it's only, can two of you, Deb and I were both absent. Doesn't matter, oh, we can still vote. Oh, yeah, we can still, record, yeah. so you guys can still, we can still vote, vote right, yeah. I need at least we one. We trust you. Vote. One of you need to vote. Okay. <laughs> no? In the affirmative. <laughs> motion yeah, yeah, so, oh, I guess you would. <laughs> so, wait a minute, so what happens, let's say motion to approve the minutes, and you don't get a majority. What do you do? I mean, that's you wait until the next right, meeting. Yeah, yeah. or you. Yeah. I mean, oh, well, let's say everybody's here. Well, I yeah. guess you'd have to correct. You, it. Have to make you a know what? You, have to make a compromise until it's you either make them or they get posted draft. Yeah. Oh yeah, motion to yeah, approve the minutes from there. July twenty third. Before you ask any of those questions. <laughs> All those in favor? Motion passes. All right. Yeah. Um, just just clarification. Once once you put pen to paper, you you formalize your uh, minutes. Yes. So, you know, if someone's doing handwritten notes, that's not necessarily, yeah. but they become public records. Okay, so, yes. yeah. so uh, the chair's report. So, um, what, don't forget, so on Tuesday the 20th, we have our meeting with Judy Barrett, kind of continuing the zoning discussion of last time. So, make sure you study those minutes. And um, Thursday night, this Thursday night, just there's a meeting for the uh, for the new school. Totally oh, yes, yes. Folks yes. on TV, there's, I think there's. One at six or six thirty, and there's one during the day. Um, and um, that's it. And I'm going to the ZBA request for comment. I'm going to recuse myself. I might not have to, but I think it's an old set of plans I did. So just to play it safe, I'm gonna I'm gonna recuse myself. And there's signatures here, which I know a few of us signed. Everybody. Everybody did. All right. So um, I'll let one of you guys bring us home. I'll be in the hall. Right. Okay, we have the ZBA request for comment, special permit number 19-816, Kimberly Drive. La, 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 la. Special permit to rebuild on existing foundation. So um, if the board would like, I can give you a little bit of explanation as to what's going on with this one. Please. Um, because this, this came to my attention from the 
building inspector, zoning enforcement officer, and we looked at it, and it was, um, and, and then I actually contacted the former building inspector, zoning enforcement officer to see how they had responded historically, um, and I'll, I'll tell you about that. So this, the structure itself is not non-conforming from a dimensional standpoint. It is complying. However, what they're proposing is to demolish it. It's a voluntary demolition. They're proposing to con reconstruct on the existing foundation and presumably within the same airspace as the, the former structure and the, um, the footprint. The question arose, if it's a voluntary demolition, and do you have the zoning bylaw? If it's a voluntary demolition, but on a non-conforming lot, now are you creating a non-conformity with the, the site? Because the site was um, a legally non-conforming undersized lot. Right, Except so for I feel like they're using the existing foundation. But then the zoning bylaw specifically I don't, says I don't that think they it, use it. structure they're can not? be rebuilt. Oh, you, but you mean if it, they're so demoing if it, the foundation yeah. in addition to that? So no, it says the foundation will remain in place. Oh. Right. So if the house burned down, they would not need a special permit, right? Because they're doing it voluntarily. Right. And so, and, I, and again, so I, I contacted uh, Mark Trivet. And he said that in the past, if it was a voluntary demolition, then the lot was a legally non-conforming lot. You lost that non-conformity. Mm -hmm. um, the zoning bylaw, when it talks about non-conformity, it doesn't talk to that. It doesn't specifically address. Purposeful if, demolition? Right. But it does say uh, Well, it, no, no, it does the... Um, the demolition, the voluntary demolition, it doesn't address a non-conforming lot and what happens if you, you know, it doesn't speak directly to the, the lot. It speaks to the dimensional non-conformity. It doesn't, so let me get it. Yeah. What is the no, lot area right now? I think it's 30,000 30, square feet, something like that. It's not a, I don't think it's a tiny lot. So you have non-conforming uses and non-conforming structures in section 21. And if you look at non so non-conforming structures, the Zoning Board of Appeals may award a special permit to reconstruct, extend, alter, or change a non-conforming structure in accordance with this section, only if it determines that such reconstruction altering shall not be substantially more detrimental than the existing non-conforming structure to the neighborhood. Permissible changes are um, reconstructed, extended, or structurally changed, and altered to provide for substantially different purpose for the same, um, different purpose or for the same purpose in substantially different manner. Then you have non-conforming single and two-family residential structures, and that's the structure. The structure itself is not non-conforming. It's the lot. So again, the applicant's lawyer disagrees, and he says that the, he states that the bylaw is silent. I would agree with that. I don't, I think. I just don't think that's it, it doesn't specifically state that a norming non conforming structure can be one that sits on a non-conforming lot. So in any case, yeah, I mean, even like the, you the, know, rather than fight it, their, yeah. their options at that point were to submit an application and, um, you know, if the zoning officer denied the, uh, the building application, then they would need to go and appeal yeah. it to the Zoning Board of Appeals, or they could um, go for the variance. Yeah, maybe we just have to look at how the zoning bylaw um, aligns with the, the mass general laws to see if there's just maybe kind of like a transposition of, of words. Be or a good um, conversation with I mean, Judy next week. Right, yes. this says, I mean, yes. except as here it, it would be. provided it's kind a, of a side note, says but a zoning we're talking about law. Yeah. Yes. A zoning ordinance or bylaw shall not apply to structures or uses lawfully in existence or lawfully begun. But only for the change. But, but see, it says structures or uses. Mm -hmm. 
when you're saying it's being are you citing so the are, are you citing 40a or you yeah, saying yeah, the 40 yeah, yeah. yeah so it's it's you're saying so, it's changing because of the, they're demolishing it well that's how it's been interpreted I was told by the former zoning enforcement officer okay. that's how he's been interpreting that with guidance from council. Um, that I thought it was only if you had, had to expand, the, if you tried to expand the size of the right, uniformity. Right, right. Well, right. So, and, I, and then I recall having a conversation with Mark prior to his leaving about another property, but it was, it was a change in use. They wanted to voluntarily demolish a structure in, um, it was a residential structure in a business zone. Mm -hmm. If you do that, and it's a voluntary demolition, yes, yes. then it reverts to the current yeah, zone use. Yeah. And, and that wasn't um, there's a, no change a in lot use dimensional in issue. No, there's not a change of use. But even along that, those lines, if, it, if that were in existence before that zoning were put in place, then then that would still be grandfathered off. It was a legally, yeah. a legally non-conform, a, a legal non-conforming lot right. with a structure. Oh, I'm saying even the use yeah. though, but even the use would. Oh, the previous one. Yeah. This one, they're not changing yeah. the use. Yeah, I know, but. Well, but the, yeah, the, was, the other one didn't have an issue with the lot size in a demolition. It, so, you know, you get nuance, you, you get variations mm -hmm. of, um, or different combinations of what the issues are. So I, again, they chose to go that path and, um, so do we have any clear directive from town council then? I haven't talked with Jay about this. Um, well, we're, not, we're, just, we're, just, we're, we're just making a recommendation on the special permit application right. itself, not on the building inspector's interpretation necessarily. Right, right. And they've, they've filed. They're, yeah. they're like, OK, right. we'll, we'll file. And I is it a special permit or is it a variance? It's a special permit. OK, yeah. 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 So just you know, so sometimes when someone rebuilds a house on non-conforming lots, it's a little bigger, sometimes they have to a special permit, same as that, except, no, it's, I not, suppose except zoning, it's not any bigger, right? Yeah. The Zoning Board of Appeals, if they feel we're interpreting yeah. it incorrectly, they could say you don't, you don't need to. Yes. Um, but I, I think this was a faster path for mm -hmm. them to getting a um, building permit. Yes. So I'll make a motion to recommend to the EBI mm -hmm. for approval. Would you second? All in favor? To recommend. Motion passes. And uh, I believe Greg indicated that um, we can close out the meeting if anyone would like to make, make a motion, motion to close the meeting. Second. All in favor? <laughs>